Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2013 preview of the Beef O'Brady's Bowl between the East Carolina Pirates and the Ohio Bobcats. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with East Carolina. The East Carolina Pirates put together an outstanding regular season, finishing 9-3. Offensively, they were explosive as always, averaging a whopping 40 points a game. Now this week versus Ohio, quarterback Shane Carton has to be patient with the passing game versus a very stingy Bobcat secondary. And East Carolina can have success running the football with Ventavious Cooper as Ohio has issues versus the run. Defensively, I've been most impressed with their improvement over last season. The linebacking core is the most athletic and disruptive on both ends of defense I've seen this season. The Pirates will have to be able to win early on the down and distance because the Bobcats do a great job of playing with tempo while East Carolina excels in the red zone. They tend to struggle getting off the field. Now let's move over to Ohio in this ball game and the Bobcats started out hot this season and started to wane in November but finished strong with the 51-23 drubbing of UMass. Offensively, I look at the receiving core with Dante Foster and Chase Cochran being able to help create opportunities for Bo Blankenship in the backfield. Ohio has to open up with a short to intermediate passing game to loosen up that stack box versus the run. Defensively, the Bobcats have to force the Pirates into a one-dimensional game, and the best way to do that is taking away the running attack, which hasn't happened with consistency this season. That'll just allow Ohio to do what they do best, which is get after the quarterback with the many different stunts and pressures that they show defensively. The X Factor for East Carolina will be their offensive line play. Now, they have played very well all season long, don't get me wrong, but this game is even more important because any team that can own the line of scrimmage versus the Bobcats has a great chance of knocking them off. So I think that's why the offensive line play will be the biggest X Factor in this ball game. The X Factor for the Bobcats will be their third down defense. If they can get off the field versus East Carolina, they have a great chance in knocking off the Pirates. I believe that's how they can win with their own offense on the field, chewing up the TOP, but it's all up to that defense to get off the field on the money down, which is third down. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For East Carolina, they have to control the pace of the game with their outstanding tailback Ventavious Cooper. Like I've mentioned before, they have the advantage up front along that offensive line. And if they can lean on that defensive front seven of Ohio, they have a great chance of winning this ball game. And our defense is all about alignment and assignment. A lot of the issues East Carolina has had defensively this year is because guys were out of position and they were busted assignments when teams ran the football, they were getting gashed by big plays. And that can't happen this week, otherwise Ohio will win this bowl game. You have to win on first down defensively. If they can get these guys off the field on third downs, if they can put them in backed up situations, that bodes well for their ability to get pressure and also their ability to get off the field. And for the Bobcats in this ball game, I believe they have to challenge the wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. They actually have the advantage with Travis Carey back there at cornerback. They have the advantage versus the Pirates passing game so they can man up one-on-one, -on -one, get aggressive, and that will put you closer to the line of scrimmage and help you stop the run. And speaking of stopping the run, it's all about attitude. It's not about size. It's not about scheme. It's not about blitzing. It's about your attitude. You have to want to stop the run. And if that attitude changes this week versus East Carolina, they can have a lot of success. And Blankenship in the passing game, I think, can be a real X factor for Ohio. They have to find ways to get him involved in the passing game with screen plays, maybe swinging him out of the backfield or flaring him out. Take advantage of his athleticism and his ability to make one miss in space. Now here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to keep an eye on in this ball game for East Carolina. You want to take a look at that interior offensive line. Two outstanding guard prospects in Will Simmons and Jordan Davis. On the flanks, they have a junior wide receiver that you want to look out for for next year's draft and Justin Hardy. And on defense is with their stock power talent, Darrell Johnson, outstanding edge rusher in that 3-4 defense. And I'm a big fan of their safeties. Both guys, Damon Magazu and also Chip Thompson, excel closer to the line of scrimmage, but also can hold their own back there in coverage. And for the Bobcats in this ballgame, three senior prospects that I want you to watch out for. Travis Carey, outstanding story, great football player as well, 5'11", 212, exactly what you want at the cornerback position, a guy that can also tackle as well as he can cover. Running back Bo Blankenship does a great job in pass pro, but can also catch the football out of the backfield, so that versatility is there. And also quarterback Tyler Tellington, a guy that's not as tall as you would like, but definitely can get the job done and is also a tremendous athlete.
The 2010 B4 Brady's Bowl featured the Southern Miss Golden Eagles and the Louisville Cardinals under first-year head coach Charlie Strong. A defensive battle was expected in this ballgame, but then a shootout broke out as Southern Miss was up 20-21 in the fourth quarter before Cardinals' Jeremy Wright brought back a kickoff 94 yards for a touchdown, and later on in the quarter, Chris Philpott, the kicker, booted the game winner from 36 yards out as Louisville was able to come away victorious 31-28. Head coach Pat Dye led his East Carolina Pirates into battle versus the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs in the 1978 Independence Bowl. The Pirates were led by the spectacular play of defensive end Zach Valentine held a potent Bulldogs offense to only 13 points while that offense side of football was on fire from the start of the game in what was a 35-13 victory. The Ohio Bobcats entered the 1968 Tangerine Bowl undefeated at 10-0 and ranked 15th in the country. Quarterback Cleve Bryant led an explosive offensive attack that averaged 37 points a game. However, the defense of the Bobcats wasn't as explosive or wasn't as potent as they were upended in a shocker by the Richmond Spiders 49-42. Jody Schultz was an outstanding linebacker when he played for East Carolina in 1981 and 1982. He was a two-time All-American and finished his Pirate career with 230 tackles and 19 sacks. Chet Adams was one of the more dominant defensive tackles of his era, an outstanding defensive lineman for the Bobcats from 1935 to 1938. And at the next level with the Cleveland Browns, he became a three-time All-Star performer. I like East Carolina in this ballgame. The Pirates have the offense that can give the Bobcats problems. They can run downhill behind those two outstanding guards, Will Simmons and Jordan Davis. So I look for a heavy dose of Ventavious Cooper in the backfield, leaning on that defensive front of the Bobcats. So I'm taking East Carolina to knock off Ohio in the 2013 beat O'Brady's Bowl.